We're Brittany and Drew, two hopeful adventurers who got married, moved into a van, and have been chasing adventures all around the globe ever since, and are now searching for a place to call home somewhere soon. Subscribe and join the ride. <sighs> After nearly three months of exploring high and exploring low in Baja, we knew there was one experience we wouldn't dare leave this beautiful peninsula without. <laughs> so, as we begin to turn our wheels northbound, our Baja Bound series continues! With quite possibly our very favorite adventure here yet. Can you believe it, babe? Our journey north begins. This is kind of crazy. It feels like we completed Baja in its entirety in the bottom loop, but there's still a few more things we gotta see as we head back north. We're retracing in our old footsteps, our old tire tracks, the old topes. Oh my gosh, there's so many more. Curve we'll and Grosso. At this point, we were making our way north from La Ventana, where Drew had a little mishap during his last kite surfing session in Baja. Looks like he needs assistance. Well, I got some really bad news. What? My stoke level was extremely high and I captured some sweet, sweet footage, but the GoPro's gone now. I was doing a trick and they twisted and then my kite slammed the water and it just kapoof. And I watched the black object, which was the GoPro, go flinging into the water. That's so sad. Uh, I was so excited for that footage too, guys. Things happen. R.I.P. GoPro. We can always get another one. Try to just enjoy some more flying and don't think about it. Maybe you'll find it. <laughs> nope, no such luck. But when the wind is blowing, Drew always feels lucky. So we made our way to La Paz, where we would unknowingly exchange cookies for a handmade personalized cutting board and tennis ball for Lucky Blue's not so lucky handlebar. We'll see you next Adios, time. Adios, amigo. Hasta luego. Hasta You've luego. been awesome. Yay. We exchanged many hugs and thanks to our friend Robert before heading to the store to hopefully replace our missing friend. We got things. Ooh, yay. Is that really good news? I got you Polaroids. <gasps> and they packaged it so nicely for us. I'm very excited about this. Oh, oh. that's wonderful. Stoke level is back to high. Very high, as we make our way back up the pinky. Because we're going up. <laughs> we waved bye to La Paz and got cozy in our chairs because we had committed ourselves to driving nearly 500 miles to Guero Negro, arriving for a long anticipated adventure by the following night. On a side note, we thought it was important to mention that while we're out here in Baja, making the most of this journey, and enjoying this beautiful place. Whenever we do have the chance to be on Wi-Fi, we take the time to catch up on how our world is doing. And with the war having broken out and so much unpredictability out there and the prices of gas soaring and us living in a van, you know, our hearts go out to everyone who's being affected by everything that's been going on. And just because we're out here miles and miles away, it doesn't mean that we're not close in spirit because we are. All we can do is hope for the best possible outcome and try and help in whatever way we can. And we hope that our Baja series has helped give you all a little space of joy and a breath of fresh air in the midst of, you know, everything. With lots of miles still left to go before arriving to Loretto, where we would stay that night, daylight was dwindling, so we tried our best to stay on task and not get too distracted. But if you've been watching our series, then you know the roadside attractions in Mexico are sometimes too good to pass up. These look like dried candied figs. Natural. This is the cactus de aquí. Se llama ah, dulce de pitaya. Pitaya. Este, de mire. Cactus. Wow. Es como wow. mermelada. Wow. Este. This is the jelly of a cactus. Of the cardone cactus. Mmm. 
It's so unique. Mm. I like the texture. Wow. Okay. Uh, Both of these, a big bag of oranges and a whole thing of cactus jelly for 10 bucks total. It's like I can almost smell that fresh orange zest and it smells so good. And you know what else smells amazing? Laundry day. Especially when your laundry is being done with the sponsor of today's episode. We love using True Worth's eco-friendly laundry strips, not only because they are a super convenient space saver for those of us who live in tiny homes, but also because it allows us to support their mission of reducing the amount of single-use plastics that end up in our landfills and oceans. They come in this compostable, biodegradable sleeve that reduces the amount of carbon emissions that occur in transport by 94%. All you do is rip the strip and toss it right in with your laundry. And we have another load that's already dry over here. Ooh! Every time we use our True Earth Eco laundry strips, our laundry comes out smelling so fresh and it is so soft. If you want to join us in saving our planet one load of laundry at a time, then be sure to use our link below and our code ADVENTURE for 10% off who also loves the smell of fresh laundry. I wasn't sure if we were gonna get to do this. Ah! Surprise! <laughs> we both are in need of a shower. Yeah, can you tell by... And that smell. You're lucky you're behind the screen. We made Amigo, he's having dinner with us. <laughs> Holy cow. That's right. That's the butt of a cow. <laughs> a lot of cow. Whoa, 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 what's, what's happening in there? That's oh, x-rated. Don't look kids, we can't control the cows. You can just avoid them. I think we joined them for the evening walk. <laughs> I did appreciate they were all in one large herd. It was easy to see them. That's very true. Every night's an adventure in the van. Every day and every night. Piña tamale. I always thought bananas were called bananas, but they're platanos. Con aguacate. And the avocados here are so good. Today we have six hours that we'll be driving from Loreto all the way up to Guerrero Negro, where we'll be going whale watching. <laughs> I think Drew's excited. Are we ready? We're ready. Listo. It's like cleaning earwax out of Spirit's ears. <laughs> we really gotta get that car wash. <laughs> Ew. Spirit is so dirty. Oh my gosh. It's been good camo for the banditos though. It's worked. <laughs>
With another full day of driving ahead through one of Baja's notorious gas gaps, we needed to make sure that we were prepared. I'm a little nervous because if there's no gas station ahead, we're gonna have to turn around. There is no gas in front of us. Hey, look, it says welcome. Oh, we're back already. It's roughly about $4.30 per gallon. I would have thought it would have increased more considering how much it's increased, even a dollar to $2 per gallon in the States in some places. Hear that mariachi music? It's playing everywhere around here. It's not my favorite. We've got all sorts of people showing up at the gas station today. Gracias, señor. Ciao. Hasta they're always so friendly at the gas pump. One thing I dislike about other people pumping our gas that really bugs me is that every time they fill Spirit's tank, they overflow it and it like flows down, which leads to rust eventually. Uh, and I just like, I hate the smell of gas. I smell and it right now. I know, it's like the worst. When I pump uh, it, I'm always like super clean about it. I know. <laughs> I know it probably would drive some of you guys crazy too. Kind of like the mariachi. One of my favorite camping spots. I mean, the bay is so gorgeous. Oh my goodness. Look at that view right now. And it is packed. It's even more full now. And there's a lot more sailboats. We just saw a guy on the side of the road and we're gonna give him some oranges. I think he is hot and hungry. He looks like he's been walking for a while. One from each of us. The plan. Yeah. yeah. Gracias. Sí, sí, Gracias. Sí, Gracias. Bonito día. Oh, he was so grateful. He was so grateful for that. Uh, he's eating it right now while he's walking. Oh. Makes you want to make him a sandwich. <laughs> we like make him a PB and J, except we don't have bread. There is El Requesón. A lot of van lifers say this is one of their favorite beaches in all of Baja. Because it has this cool little spit that attaches to the island at low tide. Drew and I actually hiked around that island when we first came across here. But it is gorgeous. It'd definitely be a windy spot for camping, that's for sure today. We just can't get enough of this spot, can we? No, it's too good. I know, and we never got to camp here. No, it just didn't, uh, didn't work out in the cards. Nope and we still have over four hours to drive. We got lunch on the horizon, reheating the coffee. I got you a surprise at the grocery store yesterday. Whoa, <laughs> surprise, thank you, babe. I feel like it's my birthday. <laughs> Only we know how it goes, we know how it goes, our togetherness. We are now in San Ignacio. This is the spring. It is definitely plentiful with lushness, water, and palm trees. Some of you guys might have seen Crystal and Jazz stay here a few weeks ago. Yep. I love these palm trees. Me too. We drove through the heart center of this little palm oasis town in the middle of the Baja Desert, its small plaza providing shade with the magnificent laurel trees. And we passed through a few more palm trees before making it to yet another one of our northbound military checkpoints. Abierta. 
Five minutes later. Gracias, señor. Hasta luego. There's a huge line behind us right now. It must be like nine cars long. We literally showed him the entire map of Baja that we've driven. We gave him some oranges. We gave him a tour of the van. I he felt like we watch. Yeah, I felt like we were in the grocery parking lot and somebody was asking us in Spanish questions about our van and our route. He was so nice. I just love their gratitude. And his ingenuity. Yeah. Did you see him using a can? He was original. Whistling. That takes a lot of air. I feel like he was singing a Yankee Doodle. He would have done good in the uh, Civil War time. Yeah. And after being serenaded by our new friend, that night we made it to our destination of Guero Negro just in time for our very favorite show, Sunset. Always on time and always worth the watch. That's so magical. And the birds. Ah, well, it's an early one. The roosters are crowing. Ready? Come on. We're going whale watching. How exciting is this? We're going whale watching. Oh, I gotta lock the van. You take the camera. <laughs> it's like 53 degrees out. Laguna Ojo de Liebre was the very first place on the whole planet to be declared a whale refuge. In 1973, when commercial whaling ended, Mexico declared this lagoon a protected area. So it was the very first whale refuge of any kind in the whole world. I was here first in 1988. I came here to do uh, research on calf development, how mothers have and raised their babies in the lagoon. And that was before commercial whale watching was a thing. So. It has developed over the years and now it's a booming business here in Guerrero Negro. This lagoon is the biggest lagoon in the world. This is the principal calving lagoon where gray whales come to have their babies and to raise their babies. The other lagoons are San Ignacio and Mag Bay. Usually we have 1,500 to over 2,000 whales in the lagoon. The other lagoons are kind of like overflow parking in a way. Like when this one fills up first in January, whales start to go and go into the other lagoons. The migration is getting later and later every year because we've had an unusual mortality event because of lack of food. Because there's no ice now in the Arctic, gray whales are bottom feeders, so they feed on amphipods, tiny little critters that are in the mud, and amphipods eat algae. Gray whales are survivors. They're the oldest whale on the planet. They're a prehistoric whale. They're only related to fossils. So they have been through meteor strikes. When the dinosaurs went extinct, they're survivors. So they are figuring out how to find new sources of food. So the babies are always in contact with the mother, rubbing on the mother. Because they can't swim all day every day, they rest on the mother's head. They'll put their tails on the back and rest like that so that they don't have to swim all day. So a mother that has a lot of barnacles, its baby is gonna have a lot of scar tissue. And a mother that is clean of barnacles will be almost black. Its baby will also be almost black because it doesn't have scar tissue. So it's a family trait. The mother that has a lot of barnacles, the barnacles spawn onto the baby. So the baby will have a lot of barnacles and its baby and its baby and its baby. So it gets carried on down through the family, family line, our barnacle coverage. Now, if a whale has a lot of barnacles on its head, it slows them down in the migration route. So what they will do is they'll swim up rivers or fresh water, go into the Sacramento Delta, somewhere where there's fresh water, they'll swim there to kill the barnacles so that the barnacles drop off. They also rub on the boat to rub some of those barnacles off. We had no idea that gray whales were so friendly. 
But being so touchy-feely from birth, they crave touch for social bonding and to reinforce companionship. They're especially curious and intuitive, coming up to whale watchers and approaching certain people for different reasons. That whale was spending a lot of time with you, and usually there's a reason why the whale, either they're healing you or giving you emotional support, injecting you with their love and healing power. Wow. So, yeah, and sometimes it's just that the person that just loves them the most, and some people just, they, get, they have a natural affinity and an understanding for whales. If there's nobody that really needs them in the boat, they'll choose that person that, that really loves them the most. So you want to open your heart, open your mind, and just love that whale. Look, it's a third whale. One, two, and three. And as if we hadn't already seen enough whale magic, moments later we ran into one of our biggest YouTube inspirations, the Bucket List family. Hey! How you doing, man? Hi! We've been watching your channel for years. We're YouTubers too. <laughs> yeah. We're Mr. and Mrs. Adventure. Where are you from? Uh, we live in a camper van. Eight oh, years amazing. now, but... Yeah. <laughs> nice to meet you out here. Yeah, pleasure. <laughs> About two more weeks we're here. Well, and then we're off here. Uh, back to California. We're trying to move to Portugal. That was amazing. We never know when we go on these kinds of tours what we're going to get, if we're really going to see the best. And it's actually, wildlife. Sherry, who took us on the boat, who was our guide, she said this was one of her favorite trips that she's had all year. So I guess we brought some good adventure. The whales knew that we'd be sharing it with all of you, so they showed up today. I love how the whales can sense your personality and they know that they need to spread joy and they I can mean, tell the energy on the boat and that one went straight for you yeah it was unreal apparently i'm the whale whisperer <laughs> and i even saw it like beelining like a submarine towards me you guys saw that footage. i think that one of the best parts of all this though is that you guys get to see it too yeah. incredible yeah. yeah what's next who knows baja has exceeded all expectations so many expectations including tacos taco time Who's excited for tacos? I am. Let's hit that road. You wanna drive while I feast? Oh, that's a good idea. Comida. All right, all right, all right. Wait, ooh, I'm getting in on that. You know, radish? Ooh, radish, cucumbers. Yeah, all the fixings. Yeah, I love how they put these on Look, the Look, grilled onions. Wow. Yeah. Delicious. Okay. Down the road. And just like that, after one unforgettable day, we were back on the road and on our way to yet another adventure. I know, it's scary. Ah! <laughs> Are you done yet? You're doing great, babe. You're doing great. Just keep the road, the van on the road. Just eat the taco. If you haven't already, you're gonna wanna subscribe and tune in next Sunday as our Northbound Baja Bound series continues. And if those whales didn't blow your rainbow socks off yet, you're not gonna wanna miss what happens next.